Dame Flora Mackenzie Robson, DBE was an English actress and star of the theatrical stage and cinema, particularly renowned for her performances in plays demanding dramatic and emotional intensity. Her range extended from queens to murderesses. Early life, Robson was born in South Shields, County Durham, of Scottish descent to a family of six siblings. Many of her forebears were engineers, mostly in shipping. Her father was a ship's engineer who moved from Wallsend near Newcastle to Palmer's Green in 1907 and Southgate in 1910, both in North London, and later to well in Garden City. She was educated at the Palmer's Green High School and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Career Her father discovered that Flora had a talent for recitation and, from the age of five, she was taken around by horse and carriage to recite, and to compete in recitations. This established a pattern that remained with her. Robson made her stage debut in 1921, aged 19. In cinema she was often chosen for character roles, notably that of Queen Elizabeth I in both Fire Over England and The Sea Hawk. At the age of 32, Robson played the Empress Elizabeth in Alexander Corder's Catherine the Great. She was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role as Ingrid Bergman's servant in Saratoga Trunk. That same year audiences in the UK and the US watched her hypnotic performance as Vtatarchita, the nursemaid, royal confidant and assassin to Vivian Lee's Queen Cleopatra, in the screen adaptation of George Bernard Shaw's Caesar and Cleopatra. After the Second World War, demonstrating her range, she appeared in Holiday Camp the first of a series of films which featured the very ordinary Huggett family. As Sister Philippa in Black Narcissus. As a magistrate in Good Time Girl. As a prospective Labour MP in Frida. And in costume melodrama, Saraband for Dead Lovers. Her other film roles included the Empress Dowager Shixi in the 1963 film 55 Days at Peking, the Queen of Hearts in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Livia in the abortively attempted eye, Claudius, Miss Millcrest in Murder at the Gallop. She struggled to find a footing in the theatre after she graduated from RADA with a bronze medal since she lacked the conventional good looks which were then an absolute requisite for actresses in dramatic roles. After touring in minor parts with Ben Greed's Shakespeare Company she may have played small parts for two seasons in the new repertory company at Oxford, alongside a youthful John Gielgud but her contract was not renewed, she was told, as tactfully as possible, that they required a prettier actress. Unable to secure any acting engagements she gave up the stage at the age of 23 and in a disconsolate life change she took up work as a welfare officer in the shredded wheat factory in Welland Garden City. For four years, Dame Flora, who would become one of the half-dozen finest dramatic actresses of her generation, continued in this twilight zone until the young Tyrone Guthrie, due to direct a season at the new Festival Theatre, Cambridge, asked her to join his company. It was the dramatic making of her. Her acting a Euro as the stepdaughter in Pirandello's six characters in search of an author a Euro made her the theatrical talk of Cambridge. She followed on to as much excited applause with Isabella in Measure for Measure, opposite a youthful Robert Donnett, Iphigenia, Pirandello's Naked. The title role in Iphigenia, Vaya in the Cherry Orchard, and finally the huge challenge of Rebecca West in Ibsen's Rosmersham. These performances signaled the arrival of an actress who could either transmit emotional stress or simply hint at it, with rare power. Never again, in a career which was a constant struggle to achieve the roles worthy of her talents, would she have such a run of opportunities. In her second season, though, she had few dramatic opportunities and once again her lack of chocolate box appeal meant that the management dispensed with her services. Yet chance or destiny came to her rescue in the early 1930s, when she was cast as the adulterous Abby in Eugene O'Neill's Desire Under the Elms, a play which in that age of stage censorship was considered too shocking to be given a public performance. In the little club theatre, The Gate, near Charing Cross, she scored a direct hit with audiences and critics alike. It was, though, her brief, shocking appearance as the doomed prostitute in James Bridey's play The Anatomist that put her firmly on the road to success. If you are not moved by this girl's performance, then you are immovable the Observer critic wrote. This success would lead to her famous 1933 season as leading lady at the Old Vic, 
opposite Charles Lawton. By the end of it she was caught in the theatrical firmament as a star. She acted late into life, though not on the West End stage, from which she retired at the age of 67, latterly often for American television films, including a lavish production of A Tale of Two Cities. She also gave performances for British television, including The Shrimp and The Anemone. In the 1960s she continued to act in the West End, in such plays as Ring Round the Moon, The Importance of Being Earnest and Three Sisters. Dame Flora's career ran down after her curious decision to leave the stage after the old ladies. However she continued to act on film and television, though the roles were often not rewarding at all. She was last briefly seen as Stygian Witch in the fantasy adventure Clash of the Titans in 1981. Both the BBC and ITV made special programmes to celebrate her 80th birthday in 1982 and the BBC ran a short season of her best films. Honours, she was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress as Angelic, a high Asian maid, in Saratoga Trunk. She was created a commander of the Order of the British Empire in 1952, and raised a dame commander in 1960. She was also the first famous name to become president of the Brighton Little Theatre. On July 4, 1958, she received an honorary dlit from Durham University at a congregation in Durham Castle. She was the subject of This Is Your Life in February 1961 when she was surprised by A. Amon Andrews in central London. Personal life and death, her private life was largely focused on her large family of sisters, nephews and nieces who used the home in Wickham Terrace, Brighton, which she shared with sisters, Margaret and Shula. She died in Brighton, possibly from cancer, aged 82, although the exact cause was never revealed. She had never been married or had any children. The two sisters, with whom she shared her life and home, died around the same time, Shula shortly before Flora, in 1984, and Margaret on February 1, 1985. Legacies. Dame Flora Robson Avenue, built in 1962, in Simonside, South Shields is named after her. There is a plaque on their house in Wickham Terrace, Dyke Road, Brighton, and also one in the doorway of St. Nicholas's Church, just up the hill from their house and of which Flora Robson was a great supporter. There is also a plaque to commemorate the opening of the Prince Charles Theatre by Flora Robson. In 1996, the British Film Institute erected a plaque at No. 14 Marine Gardens, location of Flora's other home in Brighton, where she lived from 1961 to 1976. A plaque at 40 Handside Lane in Welland Garden City records Flora Robson living there from 1923 to 1925. A blue plaque sponsored by Southgate District Civic Trust and Robson's former school Palmer's Green High School was unveiled at her family home from 1910 to 1921, the law, 65, the mall, Southgate on April 25, 2010. Partial filmography. Theatre performances, Queen Margaret in Will Shakespeare at the Shaftesbury Theatre, London, 1921, Shakespearean repertory with Ben Greet's company, 1922, J. B. Fagan's Company at the Oxford Playhouse, 1923, Two Seasons at the Festival Theatre, Cambridge, 1929 Euro 30, Abbey Putnam and Desire Under the Elms at the Gate Theatre, London, 1931, Herodias and Salome at the Gate Theatre, London, 1931, Mary Patterson in The Anatomist at the Westminster Theatre, London, 1931, Stepdaughter in Six Characters in Search of an Author at the Westminster Theatre, London. 1932, Bianca in Othello at the St. James Theatre, London. 1932, Alwyn Peel in Dangerous Corner at the Lyric Theatre, London. 1932, Eva in For Services Rendered at the Globe Theatre, London. 1932, Ella Downey in All God's Chillon Got Wings at the Embassy Theatre, Swiss Cottage, 1933. A Season at the Old Vic, London, 1933 Euro 34, Lady Catherine Brooke in Autumn at the St. Martin's Theatre, London, 1937, Ellen Creed in Ladies in Retirement at the Henry Miller's Theatre, New York, 1940, Sarah, Duchess of Marlborough in Anne of England at the St. James Theatre, New York, 1941, Rodendrum in the Damask Cheek at the Playhouse Theatre, New York. 
1942 a Euro 43, Thar copyright Rase Rakin in Guilty at the Lyric, Hammersmith, 1944, Lady Macbeth in Macbeth at the National Theatre, New York, 1948, Lady Cicely Way on Foot and Captain Brassbound's Conversion at the Lyric, Hammersmith, 1948, Christine in Black Chiffon, at the Westminster Theatre, 1949 and the 48th Street Theatre. New York, 1950, Lady Catherine Brooke in Autumn at the Q Theatre, London, 1951, Paulina in The Winter's Tale at the Phoenix Theatre, London, 1951, The Return at the Duchess Theatre, London, 1953 A Year of 54, Janet in the House by the Lake at the Duke of York's Theatre, London, 1956, Mrs. Alving and Ghosts at the Old Vic, 1958 A Year of 59 and the Prince's Theatre, London, 1959, Miss Tina in the Aspen Papers at the Queen's Theatre, London, 1959 and on. Tour to South Africa, 1960, Grace Rovert in Time and Yellow Roses at the St. Martin's Theatre, London, 1961, Miss Moffat in the Corners Green at the Connaught Theatre, Worthing, The Flora Robson Playhouse, Newcastle upon Tyne and on tour to South Africa, 1962. Gunhild and John Gabriel Balkerman at the Duchess Theatre, London, 1963, Lady Bracknell in The Importance of Being Earnest at the Flora Robson Playhouse, Newcastle upon Tyne, 1964, Hecuba in The Trojan Women at the Edinburgh Festival, 1966, Miss Prism in The Importance of Being Earnest at the Theatre Royal Haymarket, London, 1968, Mother in Ring Round the Moon at the Theatre Royal Haymarket, London, 1968, Agatha Payne in The Old Ladies at the Duchess Theatre, London, 1969, Elizabeth I and Elizabeth Tudor, Queen of England at the Edinburgh Festival, 1970. References External links Flora Robson at the Internet Movie Database, Flora Robson at the Internet Broadway Database, Flora Robson Performances in the Theatre Archive, University of Bristol. Flora Robson's appearance on This Is Your Life